Hello, beautiful seekers, and welcome to our moon magic and our discussion for the Pisces new moon happening on March 13th, 2021. I personally love Piscean energy. This is one of my favorite energies to work with. And every year of my life, I feel more and more drawn to it and find it to be one of the most useful ways to have a meaningful life and to have a life that is soul driven and that is, uh, it just has like a, a resonance to it. And I also have found that this is the energy through which you want ease of things happening in your life, right? Ease and joy to happen. Accessing Pisces, Piscean energy is one of the best ways to do that. It's not the only way. And not everybody's going to associate it with it the same as I do. But I can say that there's wisdom here in this energy that is really, really potent if you're willing to open yourself up to it. So when I sat down to feel through this new moon, I was really excited to see there's a lot of renewing, like renewing energy in this reading. Um, this is a, or in this moon, excuse me. This is a moon that's really associated with rebirth and with refreshment and kind of like a sense of baptism. That sense that, you know, you can come back to your soul and in reconnection with that, all things are possible and all healing is possible. Um, so there is a symbolism going on there with that. Pisces season is associated with rebirth. It is associated with ascension. It is associated with release from um, all the heaviness. And the Pisces new moon every year happens at the very end of winter, right? The last weeks of winter. It's the last new moon before we hit Aries season. And so every year there's going, and you know, in the Western astrological tradition, the shift from Pisces into Aries season is kind of the new year. It's it's the rebirth. And whether you're in the Northern or Southern hemisphere, the Northern hemisphere, we're obviously entering spring. Um, and in the Southern hemisphere, we're, you're entering um, autumn at a time of transformation as well. So regardless, we're heading close to the equinox and this is a really powerful time of birth rebirth and renewal. And this new moon is no exception this year, uh, kind of following on the heels of what we talked about with the Virgo full moon just a couple of weeks ago. That moon was really intense, really powerful. And I talked about how Virgo Pisces as an axis is about healing. It's about like deep healing of ourselves and with others and coming back to a divinity, right? They're both associated deeply with a concept of a divinity and healing. And the, the Virgo full moon was part of that healing. Now, this is kind of the second part of the Virgo Pisces uh, moon cycle, right? So this new moon in Pisces is a time of healing and renewal. And there's a really deep simplicity to it, this specific moon this year. I think as a follow-up to that really powerful Aquarius season we had in February, this new moon is like, okay, whatever we have learned last two or three months of this year, this is an important time to just take a breath. This moon, so we have the sun and moon meeting up to create the new moon at 23 degrees of Pisces. And very close by, we have Neptune at 20 degrees of Pisces and Venus at 19 degrees of Pisces. So these four uh, luminaries are hanging out together in Pisces. Uh, Neptune obviously rules Pisces. The moon likes being in a watery sign. And Venus likes being here in Pisces as well. So this is a really beautiful confluence of energies. And I will admit that, you know, Moon, Neptune, and Pisces, and Moon, Neptune, and Venus especially, um, and then getting amplified by the sun, this is not about getting realistic and getting analytical and getting over-functioning and getting controlling about what you want your life to look like and making up a whole bunch of to bullet point to-do lists and saying, this is how I'm going to get it done. I'll admit this moon does not have that energy to it at all. This moon's going to work with a little bit more of the subtle energetics of what it means to be in an emotive state of healing and receptivity. And we talk about this a lot. You know, this comes up in so many different forms of teaching. And I know many of you you know, run across this teaching all the time. And I'm, I'm definitely not the person to have come up with it, right? But it's important to feel that we are allowed 
to dream, to believe, to have faith in ourselves, to trust our souls, to listen into our souls. It's important that we give ourselves the benefit of feeling emotively connected to what it is we truly want and not to just be taking action, 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 action. And so this moon's gonna pull us into that space. And contextually, we have all this energy in Pisces, which I'm loving. Um, this is also, this moon's happening right as Mercury finishes its post shadow phase. So the three weeks after a Mercury retrograde is a time when we're kind of sweeping up the uh, the crumbs of whatever we were learning in Mercury retrograde. We're, we're incorporating whatever we ha needed to learn, incorporate, review, reassess. So it's ending here on this new moon. So we can, Kind of let that go. Another context piece for this new moon is that we are easing out of a lot of the harsh square energy that we had during Aquarius season when we had all this energy in Aquarius squaring off against Uranus and Taurus, which was challenging what we believe. It was challenging how we self-discipline. It was challenging how we self-nourish. It was doing a lot. So this moon is kind of saying, okay, like we just went through like a really big learning cycle. So now we need to take a moment and we need to tap back into our souls and we need to listen and we need to get back in touch with our emotive integrity. And I think after this year of jangling and after the last few months of a lot of jangling and a lot of le electricity, we sometimes stop trusting ourselves. We start trusting that part of ourselves that is associated with Piscean energy. It's a soulfulness. It's not something that you can put on a to-do list. It's not something that you can check off. It's not something that you can over-function into being okay. And so it sometimes we don't trust this part of ourselves anymore because it doesn't have like that concrete uh, action based translation right away. But there is a way to work with it. And uh, that's what I, that's where I'm heading right now. <laughs> so Piscean energy sometimes and Neptunian energy, and this is really the emphasis of this new moon all across the board has a reputation. The shadow side of Neptunian and Piscean energy is self-delusion, overindulgence in things that numb us out, um, fantasizing about things that actually aren't good for us, um, believing in the idea of somebody or something and thinking that's what's going to give us, you know, happiness or success, but not really being able to see the truth of it, right? Just to get confused by our own fantastical ideas. Yes, that is the shadow side of these energies, right? However, it's important to embrace the beautiful side of these energies, which is to remember that it's okay to emotively trust ourselves, right? To have ideas, to come up with new dreams, to come up with new fantasies, to come up with new pleasures. And I mean pleasures not as a superficial kind of like, I'm eating a bag of chips and ooh, I'm getting that like hit. I'm thinking about pleasure as something that goes deep to our soul, right? We are allowed to utilize this dreamy energy to do just that. And I think it's so important to come back here because it is something that has been a little difficult to access, I think, over the last few months to get back into that dreamy, playful, fantasy driven, you know, where ideas come from and sprout. And so it's really important to, if you can, to create some space for yourself during this moon, this new moon, you know, it's about planting seeds, it's about planting intentions, it's about that sense of baptism. So this is not about who you've been this last year. This is not about who you've been the last 10 years. This is not about who, you, who you've been the last year or month. You know, you may have, I know for me, like the last month has been really, really challenging emotionally. I've been grieving a lot and doing a lot of shifting and not because anything bad's happening in life, that's just something that comes up. I do this work often. Um, and, you know, I could let that dictate how I use this moon. I could just say, well, maybe this is just who I am now, right? But I know better than that because I know that we are fluid and that we move through different states in our lives and that nothing is like my emotive state in one part of my life is not gonna dictate the rest of my life, right? So it's a really important to let yourself know that even if you've had challenging months or you've had um, really heavy emotions or experiences, like it doesn't have to be the thing that dictates what you're allowed to dream of, what you're allowed to hope for, what you're allowed to explore. You know, sometimes we don't even let ourselves dream or explore things because we feel like, well, I'm not allowed to do that because right now I'm over here in this emotive state. The other way to work with Neptunian energy, if you're looking to harness it a little bit more, 
like I was talking about, if you want that ease of life and you want to feel that soulfulness in life, just more present in your day to day. The other thing this new moon is going to be really great for is listening in for the little pinches, feeling in for the little pinches in life. That's what I call them. Um, and it's a really great practice. It's a really great way to keep morphing sustainably over time without requiring of yourself huge dismantlings, like catastrophic dismantlings every you know couple of years listening in for the pinches so when you're kind of letting yourself trust yourself again listening into your soul being like letting that integrity speak to you through this all this neptunian piscean energy notice where things pinch a little bit where they don't fit quite right um where your shape has changed and it's like this just it's like i can live with it it's fine it's not like super painful it's not ruining my life at this moment, but I can feel that it's pinching. And maybe you've been ignoring that pinch, you know, because you can live with it. It's just a little pinch. It's just a little eh. But this is a great moon to listen in for that as well. And to consider, are you allowed to adjust that? Are you allowed to maybe think about ways that maybe that can shift or change? I think this is a fantastic moon to listen in for the little pinches and also to listen into the fantasies. So it's it's got both of those parts to it um, and it is about trusting our intuitive emotive wisdom and not not the practical checklist so don't you know like i said you're not going to get the best information from there and nine of swords showed up oh you know i love the nine of swords i'm going to pull another card i think to go along with this one you know nine of swords to me it really when i look at that i look at all those those nine swords i think about all the swords we've collected since the last Pisces new moon, actually, you know, um, whether we've consciously known we were collecting them or not, you know, this last year, we, we got to acknowledge it. This last year has been challenging and uh, most of us have been collecting some swords. Some of them are very subtle, right? And they're hanging, they're hanging there and the star. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay. And they're hanging there. And like I was saying with this new moon and the healing of it is to, you can acknowledge these swords. You know, I, I'm really a fan of saying, you know, oh yeah, there they are. I'm having those thoughts. I'm having those, those feelings. I'm having those anxieties. I'm having those worries. I'm having those checklists that I feel like I can't quite check off. And things are, you know, functioning in a linear manner right now. And I'm really frustrated. And, and, you know, this can come up in so many different thoughts and ways, right? It's okay to acknowledge that those are there. And it's also okay to decide to put them down. And that's where this moon, I think, is so helpful. Because it allows us to hear that deeper wisdom that's like, okay, yeah, you can look at all that. You can look at all this to the list, but like, let's just put that down for a moment and come back, come back here. Just really hear what it is you're needing to focus on, what you're really desiring, what your heart is really saying. It's, it's going to be something simple. And here's the thing, you know, the star is about healing. The star is about um, optimism and growth and expansion and things arriving that we need, right? I always think of, the, I look at the star and I see this being, you know, she's like a divine being um, watering the earth with her, with her wisdom and with her, with her guidance from outside of like our little analytical perspective, right? And the star, yes, it's associated with Aquarius, not Pisces. Um, <laughs> the, that joke always being, you know, people who don't do astrology always think Aquarius is a water sign because it's the water bearer. And um, it's like, oh no, it's an air sign. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the star, the star is a healing card and, um, and is about expansion, is about reaching for what we dream of. And you know what's funny is I think sometimes Speaking of like delusion with Piscean energy and um, and with fantasy and you know I think sometimes a funny thing that we do as people, not everybody maybe, but is that we have like fantasies we impose on ourselves. We're like, I'm supposed to want to have like this huge business and want to be making this insane amount of money and I sh I should be wanting to be having all these followers and have my body look a certain way. And I, sh and I, and I, this is my fantasy. I want to have this type of thing and I want to have this type of career and I want to have this type of relationship. And sometimes the fantasies we're imposing on ourselves are kind of heavy. 
they're kind of heavy. They, they don't actually fit us very well. They don't really speak to our souls. They don't really fill us up. And we don't really deep down want them. We want something so much simpler <laughs> than all of these, these things. And you know, and that's not to denigrate. If you do want to make, you know, you have a financial goal or you have a goal that feels really good to you, great. I'm talking about those things that we impose on ourselves saying, I should want this. I should want to be busier. I should want to be doing these things. And this is a really great moon, new moon as well to just take a moment and really get honest with yourself. Is that truly your fantasy? Is that truly your dream? Or is it ringing hollow? Um, you know, Venus and Neptune and the sun and the moon, they're all inviting us to get really real with what our true fantasies are. And you know, you, that does not mean coming up with a complex fantasy necessarily. It could be, but I find for myself that when I let myself fantasize, my fantasies are so simple. They're so simple, they're so sweet. You know, for me, it's about just having more time to rest, to paint, to draw, to write, to listen to birds singing. I don't want all those other bells and whistles. When I really ask my soul what I want, I want to make something beautiful. And I want the, the, the quiet and the peace to do just that. And that's it. <laughs> it's like I mean that's just one of them you know I have many other little fantasies but coming back to that is so soulful and helpful and you know when I just see these two together it's so interesting to me to see these two figures they're both leaning forward they're both leaning towards something one is kind of bracing herself for the pain and the sorrow and one is leaning forward to water something to create something and so you may continue to find that you're you're conversing with both parts of yourself in that way and this new moon is great for doing just that incorporating and letting yourself heal a little bit and prepare for airy season as well so that's the new moon discussion. It's very simple. Uh, and I hope you have a beautiful new moon. We are going to be doing kind of a baptismal activation over on my Patreon and get into some practices for how to really initiate this moon and to utilize it to the best of your ability. So if you're looking for a lot more support, we're doing a lot of fun discussions over on Patreon and I would love to see you there. But of course, I will see you here very shortly for another coffee and chat coming up in very soon and also for our monthly readings so i would love it if you stuck around liked and subscribed or joined me on patreon i love seeing you everywhere i love connecting with you all keep taking care of yourselves during this powerful pisces season and talk to you soon